Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. I think anyone who's making films knows that by the end of the first mix or the first copy, you've learned enough about uh, what are the gaping holes and you know exactly what you made. I think I'll have to put it to uh, being naive and ignorant. <laughs> Generally, uh, that combination is lethal. It makes you very brave. <laughs>
uh, dabbling in this genre and uh, though these stories are completely different from one another but at the same time i find that stories which are rooted in our lives they they sort of uh, appeal to me more and uh, i would rather tell a story that i am convinced about more than you know what what the world expects me uh, to say or you know what the trend so called trend is and all of that i feel more comfortable that as a storyteller you know this this seems like a good story why not share it with the audience so tell me about being in digital uh, mm. you know as a person who's always worked in the film format mm. a feature format uh, you know what are the challenges of this and what are the advantages what did you enjoy not having the burden of box office mm. okay so uh, correction i we came from television hmm. and uh, mostly but we were doing but that's still different from this right not not very that's what i'm coming to uh, we were into stand alone band programming so these yeah. are mostly 45 minutes or 2 hours specials yeah you've said you learnt all your film making there because yeah. you learnt how to and s- tell stories exactly and those are all uh, bound by time you yeah, know yeah 45 t- minutes 45 minutes sometimes 2 hours 2 and a half hours so and Uh, when we were doing those we used to feel that yaar isko film ki tarah karte hain because pata nahi film banane ka time milega ya nahi milega mauka milega ya nahi milega right so we used to invest a lot of our energies our passion all of that into that uh, and when uh, kbc started and uh, saas bahu uh, series started after that that kind of storytelling stopped in television and we had to move into films that that's always been the by uh, a nudge by default i i say and that stopped for us you know with digital that same era has come back now so what i anticipate is that it will start throwing a lot many writers and directors again yeah. which had stopped in 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 the in the whole 2000 2010 uh, era so to speak so i think it's it's sort of a homecoming for us and uh, it's like a, a coming to a full circle for a lot of us you know uh, people who were actually uh, who did a lot of these programming in the late 90s and early 2000 they're going to come back to a di- to the digital format in a far more comfortable manner yeah and of course you'll have the newer storytellers trying to experiment all the time mm. yeah. tell me what's the key to making effective thrillers effective thrillers yeah i'm still learning to to start with but yeah i uh, i think that the if you if you feel very balanced about time and space uh, i think you've got something great to start with if your main plot main story is uh, balanced both in terms of time and space then you're in a good space yeah what do you mean balanced in terms of time and space time as in uh, because you're always uh, racing against time so that becomes an inherent uh, component of any good thriller you know the, it could be spread over days or could, but you know that uh, finite finite yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you're talking about a story placed in that uh, time frame and space as in you know uh, what allows you without losing a sense of that time okay so as long as you can maintain that balance you're in a good space so uh, th- that's how i start mm. uh, keeping these two small little things in mind and there then there has to be a clock them. ticking yeah there has to be a clock ticking and never get lost in space so that you lose track of time so right. just trying to maintain that balance yeah. so neeraj when you look back what do you think went wrong with ayari nothing it was just a a, a story that i felt uh, needed a lot more explanation and uh, it didn't go wrong uh, wrong it, it just uh, was com- incomplete on so many fronts that it never translated into the film that you know one would have wanted to make so more than wrong i would use the word incomplete it so this incomplete. time space thing didn't happen it didn't there. translate at all because it was an incomplete thought uh, that you know I, i would i was expecting too much to be thought of by the audience too much interpretation you needed by to the explain audience, more and i needed to be more clearer mm. so uh, it was mostly a communication failure more than anything else that that's how i look at it what did you learn from it a lot i mean uh, i learned from all these films that i made uh, just because there's a hit doesn't mean that there were no flaws in that film right, right, right. so I, i in that way i mean i would think that i would all these films that we've made they've got some flaw or the other it would be just uh, stupid to say that uh, wednesday chal gayi ya uh, special chal gayi ya uh, baby nikal gayi ya uh, dhoni chal gayi ya uh, rustam worked so there's nothing to learn from that uh, tons of mistakes in all these films and we keep learning from all of them yeah <laughs> do you take notes do you revisit your projects no 
it stays with you mostly because you have you've seen the same film about about 30 40 times during the edit another 20 30 times while the mix is happening so i think you are very clear about uh, what you need to take uh, away from the film mm. uh, your mistakes they all uh, i think anyone who's making films knows that by the end of the first mix or the first copy you've learned enough about uh, what are the gaping holes and you know exactly what you made if you're honest to yourself so utna pata chal jata hai aapko then uh, hope and wish is something else <laughs> you hope that people won't see those mistakes people will discount those uh, yeah. you know uh, mistakes and move on yeah. but yeah that's the way it goes you know i read that you were a massive film buff hmm. since you were a kid and yeah. of course you said that you've named the chapter as the see yeah. each episode in in mm-hmm. special ops after the films that have influenced you um, i read that you were called cinema chief Cinemchi, it's a, it's a word. Yeah. What I mean, does it mean? It means somebody who loves cinema. Somebody who's just hook, line, and sinker in in films. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so, just, so as a cinemchi, what were the films that you that really did influence you? Apart from Kargis Ke Pool, what what are some of the other titles you've used? Guide is there. Uh, I've been a Nasir Hussain fan, so th- these are films that I've seen as kids. So I've grown up on them again. So the, Guide is a uh, all-time favorite of mine. There is uh, Yado Ki Barat. There's Shole also mentioned as one of the titles. That's the last episode, by the way. And uh, yeah, there's uh, all nine films, nine episodes, eight episodes. They are there. And all of it. Uh, are you an avid watcher even now? Do you yeah, manage yeah, to? Yeah. I try. I mean, uh, when I'm something like this right now, we are in the post of uh, ops and uh, some prep of Chanakya, so uh, I don't find that much of time. But I try to catch up as as much as I I can because I I learn a lot from uh, uh, whatever is happening around. So there's I can't stop that. Yeah. What could you tell us about Chanakya? Ha! Ah, we are going on flows in the month of October. Yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll have a next year release. Yeah. Next year release. Yeah. And has the casting been done? Uh, it's in the process. Yeah, we know who Chanakya is, but uh, the rest of the people are getting cast. Have you revealed speak. who Chanakya is? There was. It's out in public. I mean, uh, Ajay tweeted about it. Mm. So uh, we mm. know that Ajay is playing Chanakya. Right. And the rest of the cast is getting sorted. Nice. Yeah. You know the. your entry into movies was of course difficult you didn't come in with any connections within the bombay film industry you got um, nasruddin shah and anupam kher to play the roles in awareness because they loved the script right mm-hmm. but then you make this film and then the producers utv sat on that film for a year mm-hmm. and you know i kept thinking what was that year like and how did you have the courage to just sort of keep going and believe that it'll all turn out well <laughs> I think I'll have to put it to uh, being naive and ignorant. <laughs> Generally, uh, that combination is lethal. It makes you very brave <laughs> and uh, foolishly brave, as some would claim. But I, I didn't know actually. I didn't know anything about you know where my life is going to be, uh, take me with this film. But there were certain things that I was very convinced about. That yes, we should wait for this film because. Uh, uh that's a journey that needed closure i wanted to know like okay the voice that i have uh the film that i made i i wanted to know what the audience would feel about that film and until unless i know that okay what the audience will i would know i would right, know right you don't know what to write yeah, next exactly, yeah exactly exactly yeah. i would know what what i should be doing next as a filmmaker you know yeah. so i had no choice actually but to wait i mean do uh, what did you do all year Ah, wait. <laughs> Nothing else. I mean, I, I was writing a bit, yeah. And uh, what was happening is, it was a very strange year for me and for uh, Sheetal, who was my partner, uh, in the sense that you know there were these previews that were happening, and suddenly there was a, a, a there was a phone call that uh, you know we'd like to talk to you about your next film. I was wondering, okay, who who saw it when, and like, how come I don't know about it? so it, it this used to happen intermittently through that uh, one year waiting period but we just had to wait there was no other uh, option for us i was writing something and yeah as a writer i was trying to keep my mind busy and all of that but uh, yeah it was a tough one because uh, you know you suddenly had an offer you were saying no to work and uh, 
I was uh, very clear why I was saying no to, but there were people who were not understanding it or willing to understand. Mm. I remember there was a hilarious incident uh, that uh, there was a producer, uh, I can't take his name, uh, but uh, he called up and uh, this was about a month, month and a half before the release of Wednesday. And he had seen the film and uh, he said that, you know, we'd like to talk about your next project and all of that. And I told him that, look, I'm slightly caught up. Uh, with some writing and uh, writing for my next one, so uh, kindly bear with me. And when the film released, it you, you know it opened to a very dismal uh, course, percentage yeah. because there was hardly any yeah, star yeah. power, and I was a newcomer and limited release and all of that. Opened to something very uh, average or below average rather uh, on Friday, and I got a uh, got an SMS from him saying that I'm glad that you're busy. And you are unable to pick up another film, and I, I just sent him a smiley that okay, fine, let me bear this. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't have an option, so uh, it's okay. I, so I just sent him a smiley and lived with that. And then the same gentleman he uh, texts me on uh, Sunday evening huh. that I was just happening to cross uh, Chandan, and I saw a queue outside the theater, so it looks good. So I again sent him a smiley. Correct. And then on Tuesday or Wednesday, I don't remember, but uh, after two or three days, again, he sent me another message that congratulations, you know, this is... And I was out of town, I didn't know what was happening over here, but I received that message and I again sent him a smiley. I didn't have any other option. So, it, 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 it was that kind of an year, you know, I was learning on every front. And uh, yeah, it was good, cool. <laughs> You also have a wicked sense of humor, which we saw in your short film, Ouch. Yeah, I, I love that film. I love that film too. <laughs> I love that film. I will never forget Manoj Bajpayee's yeah, expression. Yeah, he was tremendous. He's, he's just yeah, he's phenomenal. He's superb and Pooja is superb. And yeah, they're yeah. so good. Why yeah. don't we see more of this humor in your movies? Uh, okay, Ouch was basically, uh, you know, how difficult black humor is mm -hmm. and you know how difficult it is in our uh, country especially, you know, it's not a genre which is very, uh, so I, I wanted to do something where I, even I was not sure that uh, if this story is uh, the right one, if the genre is right for me, but I wanted to desperately try it out, you know, and the short film format allows you to do that. Yeah. And uh, so I wrote it as a, as a skit, as a, uh, you know, as a 12 minute skit. 15 minutes skit between two people and just two people talking, you know, and just trying to tap into one moment of great chaos and see where that, uh, that went. And uh, I quite liked it. I, I'm not sure whether we are ready for it as a full blown film, as sure. a full blown feature. Hmm. But yeah, I would definitely love to try Something this. Something to yeah. turn digital. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's what I'm saying that, you know, maybe someday, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely, yeah. You know, last question, you built a, a sort of a, a company of actors hmm. and characters, hmm. you know, which you took from one film to the next, hmm. uh, you know, like Nam Shabana was a spin-off. Right. Uh, why aren't we seeing more of that? Why, why isn't that universe sort of being built out more? Well, I get bored with, uh, with the same thing again and again, if, if I mean, Thank God Shivam came in and he directed Nam Shivana. I mean, I could just write it and barely, you know, you know, focus enough to, you know, get into it again. And all of our, all of our films, they have the potential to have a sequel right? and a second yeah. part. Yeah. I somehow feel that it's like uh, the easy way out, you know, and uh, uh, I don't know, I, I just, feel that it's too easy, too simple and maybe that bores me and uh, I, I, in all humility, I, I just feel that, you know, I let me get over and done with the newer stories first and then see, okay, if, if I can, you know, have that appetite again. Because you to, were building a universe even before Rohit Shetty's cop universe. I mean, th this was, that was the, idea. the first that was, universe. Yeah, that was know? the idea with uh, Baby and uh, somehow, I don't know, I have not run out of time, I know that, but uh, let me summon that excitement and that, you know, <laughs> You'll go back that, to it. that appetite, yeah, <laughs> maybe I'll go back to it when I have that. But right now, I, I think that it's time to tell these newer stories and uh, 
uh, Chanakya automatically became a huge magnet because uh, I've never done a historical, so uh, why not? And this is one historical where you know it's not your typical war historical where you'll suddenly have this huge battle sequence. Yeah. There's, it's a lot of drama. It's a lot of drama again, a lot of chit chat, lot lot of talk. And uh, just the other day we were talking about uh, how verbose it is and Ajay was saying that I, even I am wondering, you know, I am going to be talking so much in this film. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. It is. It is. So and that's and the reason. It's such a great story to tell. It is. Yeah. It is, I think, one of the biggest stories that you know, that we have. Yeah. 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 Well, cannot wait to see it and can't wait to see Special Ops. Thank, Thank you, you and Thank congratulations. You so Thank you. Thank, Thank you. So you. Hi, this is Neeraj Pandey and uh, if you like this video, this interview, then please subscribe to Film Companion. Thank you.